Cool, 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 cool. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the Kevin Wright Show podcast. And this is the quarantine edition. <laughs> What's everybody talking about? Everyone's talking about the quarantine. I get it. I get it. Makes sense. People are talking about the quarantine. A little background on my podcast. Before I started the Kevin Wright Show, I had a licensed podcast with another company that I was working for and doing some production, and it was called Idea Hug. And Idea Hug was all about listeners would send in ideas. It could be entrepreneurial ideas, new ideas for business, new ideas for pop culture, movies, scripts, whatever it was. And then we would riff on it on the podcast. And you can, um, I just got the rights back to those. And so you can check those out. On my YouTube channel, you can check those out in different places. They're really fun. They're really good. Today, we're going to do a little bit of throwback on the podcast, and it's going to be a reminder of the old idea hug days, and I love it. And we had some listeners and some people email in um, what they did on quarantine, what they are doing on quarantine to have a breakthrough, what they're doing creatively on quarantine. And so I got the top ones here, and I'm going to just riff on them a little bit. So let's get right into it. Um One listener says he built a tiny house in his backyard, built a tiny house in his backyard, a grandma's quarters, um, got some construction, some creative on-property construction during the quarantine. I like this one. I think this is a good one. I think this is, I mean, you get out to, you get, you get to like work your body, work your muscles a little bit, be creative. Creativity is a huge thing. I noticed that's taking place during the quarantine. People are trying all kinds of different shit, you know, because we're just bored as fuck. So they're trying different stuff. Building, this is an ambitious one. Building a tiny house in your backyard, it's no big deal. I don't know if he finished it, but he said that was his goal. And he's like, laid off of work, I'm just gonna do this. It you, it gets you outside too. Here's a, the here's a thing about the quarantine that people, this is a funny thing, like the media hasn't ever said this, but it, they've scared us. The media scared us that the outside air is poisonous. This person's able to get outside and get fresh air. The best thing you can do during quarantine is get outside. You know, if you're not stuck in, in fucking nasty winter like we are here in Oregon, um, you know, if spring has truly hit you, get outside. Some For some reason, there's a stigma in this quarantine that we, you know, you got to stay inside. That if you go outside and breathe the air, you're just going to like suffocate and, and, and just die and just keel over right there and just you know, have a shitty day. That's not the case at all. I don't know why we feel that way. I don't know what spoke to us about that, but get outside and get fresh air and that's You know, building a house in your backyard, doing yard work, doing gardening, that makes so much sense. Where did that come from that we thought, you know, like, like you can't leave your house, you know, I get it. You're not supposed to be in groups and go to the movies and go to bars and and gather together at stores. I get it. We're trying to curb the the coronavirus, the COVID-19. It makes sense. But fuck, get outside. Probably the worst thing you can do is stay huddled up inside. You know, where the germs are just festering, people are sitting too close to each other, families are getting pissed at each other. I like this one, get outside and do a building project, go do a garden project, go fucking clean your car, get outside. There is nothing wrong with our air, like we're not, it's not poisonous air, you know, especially fresh nature air. It's inside, it's inside where the problem lies, you know, people are picking up this virus from airports, being trapped in an airplane with people, being trapped in a train or a bus with people. Uh, But I just think it's so funny that we, you know, I don't know where it comes from. If it's something inside of us that just started believing that the the natural, fresh nature air. A lot of people I've been talking to have been hiking. You know, go go for a hike up in the mountains. Go for a hike on your favorite trail. Go get some fresh air. Jesus, why? That's such a strange one to me. I don't know where we got the idea that the air outside is poisonous. It's not. It's good. It's probably better than your inside air. And that's a cool thing too. Like this person's being productive on quarantine. He's adding value to his property. He's he's setting up an Airbnb shelter in the back. He's setting up a place where family can come and stay. You know, that reminds me of, of a thought I had earlier. Like this quarantine is an equalizer. This COVID-19 time is an equalizer. It's a time to catch up. If you can't, you can't go to work. If you got laid off, if you're, if you're going through, if you're losing clients, if you're losing customers, if you know, it's a time to catch up on some other stuff, catch up on that property work, catch up on some of your creativity, catch up on that thing that's been bugging you. The hard part is motivation, right? I've, I've struggled with this too during this crisis. Like Part of me will get real motivated and get real creative, get back into my art, get back into my production stuff, get back into writing. But 
then you just get really depressed on quarantine. You don't get to, you know, go to the, your regular clubs and bars and, and gym and your fitness routine. And so you get depressed and you're, just, you're like, shit, I'm just going to stay home and do a goddamn Harry Potter marathon. I'm just going to watch all the Harry Potter movies, read all the books and uh, join an online chat group for Harry Potter. Nothing wrong with that. I've done that on this quarantine, but motivating yourself to go get creative is not that easy. It's a weird thing, but this is a time to catch up. This is a great equalizing time. Catch up on some stuff. Catch up on some stuff. All right. Um, somebody else said, I'm going to start a podcast. Props to you. Props to you. Uh, I give you all the freedom in the world and all the encouragement in the world. Go do it. If you have something to talk about, if you have something to speak about, if there's something that's bubbling up out of you, as I always say, if there's a message, if there's some words, and there's something you enjoy talking about, go do it. If it's quilting, start a goddamn quilting podcast. You know there's other people who will listen to it. There's a market for it. There's room for another quilting podcast. If you're interested in that sort of thing, the secret and the key to a podcast isn't the success, isn't how many listeners you get. It's that you like the topic. Sometimes people really, really like what they're doing and they become famous for it. Other, most of the time, it's not. Most of the time, that doesn't happen. If you like talking about cars, Go start a podcast on it. You'll probably be doing the thing you're doing anyways. It's probably better for your family. You like talking about cars? They're, they're fucking sick of hearing you. Your wife and your girlfriend and, and whoever, your boyfriend, your kids, they're, they're sick of hearing you just scrolling through Craigslist and looking at cars and talking about cars. Go start a podcast. Do the thing you would be doing anyways. You know, Go talk to the world. Bend my ear. Bend the, the world of Spotify, the world of Apple Podcasts. I'm talking about cars. If it's something you like to do, that's the win-win. That's my encouragement for you. Go start a podcast. I think that's a great thing to do during quarantine. You can get all the gear you need for a podcast. Good gear. You can get it for like under 300 bucks for everything you need. Go out. Go go. You can't really go to Best Buy, but you could put in your online order and pick it up on the curbside right now because we're in the goddamn apocalypse. But yeah, go, go do that. Go do that. My encouragement is there's plenty of room. There's plenty of room for more podcasts. There's room for all of us. There's room for everybody. That's a really creative thing to do and find something you like to talk about. Find something that's interesting to you, you know, something that's, that's you're passionate about. If you realize you have all these words and you have this message and you have this stuff that you're good at talking about, go do it. I think starting a podcast is a cool idea. Um, that's really cool. That's really cool. Uh, movie marathon. Somebody else said I'm doing movie marathons. We talked about that a little bit a few minutes ago. Movie marathon's a cool idea. Um, that's a classic. I'm hearing that from a lot of people. I'm doing a movie marathon. You know what's a big movie marathon that my dad was doing? James Bond. There's like there's like 20 or 30 films. That's a big ass movie marathon. Uh, Star Wars. New Star Wars movie just dropped. You can get it on streaming. I highly recommend it. I like it. Uh, Star Wars movie marathon. Check out all the Clone Wars TV series on Star Wars. A movie marathon, that's fun. Uh, and, you, and no one's saying to during this crisis, you can't like get some friends together and make popcorn, you know, make sure everyone's healthy, make sure everyone's feeling good, get them over and play cards and drink some damn whiskey and have a movie marathon. I think that's a great idea. That's a, you know, this is that the, the movie marathon one was the highest um, number of emails and responses we got. This is where everyone's like, yep, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing during this. All right. This one came in. That's awesome. I'm going to sign up for dating app. That's that's a cool thing. I, it, the timing's kind of fucked, right? Because uh, I've been seeing that a lot of these dating apps are going into hiatus and some of them are going on pause and they're like, hey, it's fine if you match with somebody, just don't go hang out. Just don't go hang out. You know, talk on the phone. They're like um, creating virtual dating app, like uh, web things so you can talk to people and do video chats. But they're like, don't, they don't want to be responsible for like spreading the virus, right? Spreading, you know, they'll, they'll spread other shit the rest of the year. They'll spread other viruses, but they don't want to be responsible for getting people together and getting people sick. I get that. But one of the listeners was like, I'm going to finally start sign up for a dating app. Okay. You've heard me talk about dating apps before. You've heard me talk about this. Uh, dating apps are hilarious. They're a hilarious thing. I haven't found the best luck. You know, it's probably because I'm not that attractive. I don't, I don't shower very much. My hygiene is subpar. I'm not that attractive. No, I'm, I'm decently. I'm like a six out of ten. I'm like a six out of ten. Some have said a seven. 
it hasn't been that successful for me. I, I think it, uh, dating apps are still clunky. Somebody needs to come up with with a new one, a new one that that cuts through a lot of the bullshit, makes it simpler and easier. They're still pretty damn clunky though. Um, but I have I haven't had a ton of success on dating apps. I like to meet people the old fashioned way. I like to meet people the old fashioned way, right? Like you guys, if you listen to my podcast, you know I'm always about having the crush on a certain barista, and I love that day to day just. I'm getting my coffee. I'm getting my coffee. And finally, I'm like, hey, let's hang out. Do you want to hang out sometime? I'm so surprised when I'll ask a woman out and I'll just be like, hey, do you want to hang out sometime? And 90% 90 of the time, they're like, yeah, totally. And I'm like, shit, why didn't I do this earlier? Why didn't I do this earlier? So I give you props for signing up for a dating app. It sounds like you're breaking through like a courage barrier. You haven't done it before. Uh, One of the funny things about signing up for a dating app is people in your community are gonna see that you're on there, you know, people that know you, and they're like, oh, Johnny McCruthers. I can't believe Johnny McCruthers on the dating app did it. They look through your profile, see all the lies you do. You know, people who know you from around town are gonna see all your lies that you put in. You know, you lied about your weight. You lied about your, your you know, your success level. You, you lied about your career. You lied about how cool you are, which is fine. Uh, I've got some stand-up material on that. You, you might have heard some of my stand-up material about dating apps where you just lie, you just lie. And if you can just convince that person just enough to get into the room with you on the, uh, you know, to, to meet you for a beer, to meet you for a drink or to meet you for a hike or whatever, if you can just lie enough to impress them, then in person, you're like, okay, truth be told, none of that shit's true. I, I'm broke, I'm unemployed. Um, I've got like six divorces under my belt, 35 kids spread out all over the world. Um, but I know I can convince you to like me. Like I lied about how cool I am on the dating app, but if you'll just give me the time of day to meet up in person, I can convince you and, and, and seduce you away from all my lies. Like everyone just lies on these dating apps. They're just full of lies. Everyone lies about the way they look. They lie about the way they act. They lie about what their ambitions are. You know, it's so funny. Dating apps are cool. I, so I just gave you a negative side of it, but I am encouraging you, go do it, go do it. You know, give it a try, give it a try. And especially if, especially if you're saying, I'm signing up for a dating app because I'm pushing myself and I'm challenging myself to be more social. That's cool, that's really cool. And you know, I don't wanna make fun of that. I don't wanna shit on that too much. I wanna give you props. That's, that you're, you're breaking through like a courage barrier. What if, during the COVID-19 crisis, what if during the coronavirus whole thing that you know we deal with for however many months, people recognize some of the fear things in themselves and have courage breakthroughs? And maybe being a little more social is one of your courage breakthroughs. You, you know, it, this one is talking about dating. You know, I've been nervous about it. I got out of a long-term relationship, da, 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 da. I'm ready to give it a try. I'm, I'm gonna go for it, I'm gonna go for it. And it stack up a bunch of dates that I can't go on right now but we'll have them all stacked up and ready to go when the goddamn apocalypse ends. Uh, that's really cool. Speaking of, of social changes, making some social changes, this is really thought, you know, side note here. A lot of me and my friends are talking about like, man, I really miss you. you. You know, we need to hug, we need to kiss, we need to hang out, we need to get drinks. This has like brought a lot of perspective to how important your social group is the people you hang with, the person who you drive over to their house on Wednesday night and see uh, that your regular bar buddies, your your regular work friends. It's really important, and a lot of people are starting to think like, okay, when the world gets back to normal, you know, when the when the occupation of the disease leaves, um, I'm gonna do this differently. I'm making some commitments to love on my friends better, to love on my family better, to be a little bit more available. You know, to be, you know, in the physical location availability sector a little bit more. Because I think we're realizing how important it is. You know, all this social distancing shit. It's, I don't like it. I'm a really like touchy, close person. I, you know, I fuck around with strangers. I get close to people all the time at grocery stores. You know, someone's talking to me. I get right up in their face. I'm like, hey, you know, let's talk. You know, I'll put my hand on their shoulder, hugs with a stranger. That's just who I am. So this has been like nerve wracking for me. I'll go to the coffee shop or I'll go to Target or whatever. Those are the two things open in my town, Target and the coffee shop. And they're like, stand, please stand 10 feet behind each other. Please stand by. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not, so like I want to like sneak up and get up on people. That's that's my way. That's my way. Uh, I'm a touchy. I'm a touchy person. I'm a social person, and so this has been really hard for me. 
you know, there's, there's been some like depression stuff built into this crisis because I miss like being with my peeps, being with my community, my friends and family and, and all that. So yeah, good for you. If you're breaking through and having some social courage ideas, whether it's getting on a dating app or, you know, just, just deciding you're going to be with your people more, deciding you're going to spend more time with your family. That's awesome. Hopefully this teaches a lasting lesson there. You know, you're going to get off your phone more and just connect to people more. Get out in front of the, uh, the, the damn couch and sit in front of the TV and be with people more and talk and look into people's eyes and have human connection. Uh, that's impressive. And if that's something that's coming out of this crisis, then that's a really cool result of it all. Um, speaking of side note number two, sitting on your, on your, on your couch and just watching movies and stuff. Um, I, I got really like, I got really, I got in a bad place this winter where I was just hunkered down on my couch. I'm watching shows and I'm like, dude, this sucks. I spend too much time on my couch. And I read this thing about this like Japanese way of life, um, where they build benches instead of couches and they build these benches to go in front of their TV and in their living rooms. They're real modern, real sleek. They don't even have a back on them. It's just like a bench. And the idea is, yeah, you can sit down and like catch a few minutes of your show, sit down and catch a few minutes on your phone, have a drink, have a tea, have a coffee, have a whiskey, whatever. But it's not a comfy couch that you can really like just fucking fall asleep in. It's an, it's a, it's an uncomfy bench. So I, I like, I got real motivated about this idea and I took my couch out and like donated it. And it was a comfy ass couch. My daughter was like, why did you do that? I loved that couch. And I built a bench, this Japanese style modern bench. And it's very simple. It's got pillows and you can kind of, but it's not comfy at all. It's not comfy at all. And the idea is like, you just sit there for a certain amount of time and then your ass starts to hurt. My ass hurts, my tailbone hurts. You can't lounge in it. You have to like sit erect, get get nice and erectus and, and, and just have your seat, seated time in front of the TV or your seated time and some of you don't struggle with this at all, but a lot of us will just we'll just we'll just slide into our couches and stay there forever and make that our home. And I so I said this, I mean it's just not comfy. And I'm I'm wondering if I made the right decision. I'm gonna let it slide for a little bit. I'm gonna let it sit for 2020 and see if this is a good thing for my life. But it it totally works. Like my ass starts to hurt, and I have to get up and go do something. And I'll I'll, I'll it'll it causes me to go clean around the house or to go work or do projects or something like that. So that's a really cool side note. Uh, I'm just giving you wisdom for your life. I'm just giving you tips and ideas and wisdom for your life. And that's what uh, my calling in this world is to make you a better person. So uh, there you go. There you go. Sign up for a dating app. I like it. Thanks for sending that one in. That takes a lot of courage. Um, it takes courage just to like put yourself out there in relationships. You know, I'm just going to let the, the forces of nature, I'm going to let God put the right person in my life. I'm going to do, yeah, that's one way to look at it. You know, let the universe bring you that person, you know, then you're not fucking around with stuff. You're just kind of letting things be natural, but signing up for a dating app is proactive and you're like, okay, let's do this. <sighs> deep breath, deep breath. Let's do this. I'm diving. I'm putting on my swim cap and I'm diving in, in, in more ways than one, in more ways than one. All right. All right. Quick review. A uh, building project in my yard, um, starting a podcast, that's a really good one, uh, movie marathon, we covered that, we covered that, go do it, go do it. Send me uh, your insights from films, I love movies. Um, sign up for a dating app, be more social, sign up for a social club, I think that's a really good one. I think the, the number two one we got behind um, movie marathon is home workouts. I'm going to use this time to get uh, my ass in shape, you know. I think more of us are going to gain weight and become sloppy little bitches more so than get our asses in shape. But I'm seeing people post on Instagram and I'm hearing from folks who are like, I'm doing squats, I'm doing lunges, I'm doing jumping jacks, I'm running around my property, I'm running around the block. I'm going to use this time to get my bikini body ready for summer. That's so good. Like that, that's a, such a good one. I've thought about that too. I've thought about that too. But what I found is I'm eating worse shit. I'm eating worse shit and not working out at all to counterbalance that, you know, uh, Uber eats, DoorDash, Grubhub. I'm, I'm on my phone. Let's rock and roll. And I'm not eating great stuff. Also, when you go to the grocery store and when you go to the, you get your food during this crisis, you're, you're not drawn to get the best stuff. You know, like you're not, you're not going into the produce section and getting a, a big, you know, batch of like kale and broccoli. You're going to get bags of chips and you're getting soda and you're getting bullshit. 
because you need some comfort. That's what I've been doing. I've been I've been taking the easy way out. I have not been cooking healthy meals. I have like I, I'll like get home because I'm going out and I'm doing stuff and I'm, I'm I'm going to the studio and I'm going to my shop and I'm doing different things to stay busy. But when I get home, I'm like, I want something easy. I want a bag that you just open up and all the shit's in there and you just reach in there and scoop whatever it is and just pour that shit into your mouth, you know? Nuts, almonds, chips. I want crunchy things to crunch on at the end of the day. But all of you folks who are are saying like, I'm gonna use this time to work out. I'm so impressed with that and home workouts. I've got this really cute neighbor and we've been hanging out. We got to know each other through coronavirus. And all of our neighborhood got together and they're like, oh, hey guys, let's be friends. And we're like, hey, nice to meet you. Maybe this is a good thing from, from COVID-19 apocalypse. So we all exchange phone numbers. If you need anything, keep an eye on each other. Thank you, you know, how are your pets doing, yada, yada, yada. But there ended up being a cute lady and she's like, come over for drinks. And I was like, hell yes, I'll come over for drinks. And um, the night I was coming over, she's like, I'm just finishing up a home workout. And I was like, that's cool. And so she was telling me all the things that she was going through. She usually likes to go out and run. She usually has a gym membership. But doing a home workout during this crisis, man, that's one of our biggest write-ins here. And I think you guys have inspired me. You guys have inspired me. Like I need to do some, I need to do some sit-ups or something. I need, first of all, I need to go on a diet. Okay, I need to, I need a better diet. I haven't dieted well this winter at all uh, because of uh, depression, um, sadness, uh, winter blues have really got to me. And uh, I'm gonna get into this. I'm gonna get into this. The home workout. Hopefully, next time we talk on the podcast, I'll have done this. I'll have done this. So this has been another episode on the Kevin Wright Show podcast. Uh, these are good ideas. What are you doing? What's what, what's your activity during quarantine? What's keeping you sane? Or, or if you're just losing your, your, your fucking mind, I want to hear about that too. You know, you can always, always chime in. Check out the podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google, anywhere they're found, YouTube, Instagram, and uh, send me your comments, send me your shout outs, and we will uh, go from there. Take care, be safe in the quarantine, um, and feel free to make some jokes about it. Thanks.